But I wanted to get then at, the, at a question of narrative, which is you've laid out here uh, a situation and a prospect which could actually be a very positive political narrative in the West, uh, which is that Africa, particularly Western Africa, is, as you put it, a foundational element in the creation of the West. Uh, the uh, African continent is part of the Atlantic world. Uh, this idea of uh, the survival and the future of the, of the Atlantic world to some extent uh, economically, demographically rests upon integration uh, of the Atlantic world on a north-south way. As you've mentioned, uh, uh, human capital pools uh, that in many cases are either Anglophone or Francophone to begin with, uh, and so you don't have language issues. Why is it that you think that this kind of vision of an expanded Atlantic community, the United States, Europe, uh, Western and Southern Africa, and then, by the way, bringing in the Caribbean uh, as well into this, as you noted, and particularly as you noted in, in your in your most recent book about the, the importance of the Caribbean aspect of this. Why is this a difficult narrative? And and perhaps does this really come down to uh, square looking squarely in the face the racial question, which is that uh, there's an unwillingness of policymakers in Europe and the United States to really think of Africa. Uh, as a continent, as a charter member of the of the Atlantic community. Um, yes, thank you for your question, Nicholas. Um, so I think race is an inescapable element in this conversation, and uh, the West, historically speaking, and presently, has a race problem. Uh, and I'm not wielding the world word that makes so many people so uncomfortable, saying that they are being racist, but they are being racialist. Yeah. Uh, in the as, and I referred to this earlier when I spoke to Europe. I said that there are a number, there are large numbers of Europeans who have a racial vision of what it means to be European, and this is um, uh, anachronistic. Actually, um, Europeans have, from the beginning of history, been um, flowing into Europe from all different quarters of the Near East, um, actually from North Africa from uh, Northeastern Europe um, and, and flowing back, in fact, also from the Americas. Um, and so historically speaking, in fact, there hasn't, Europe has not really been um, ever as simple, racially speaking, as the people who cling to these beliefs would, ha would have it, right? Um, uh, but, um, you know, the other element of this behind, beyond the racialism uh, piece, which, which just needs to be dealt with, it really needs to be confronted. Uh, and some European politicians are going to have to find the courage, politically speaking, to do so. And up until this moment, this present moment of our conversation, I have trouble finding uh, prominent European politicians who, who actually have the voice for this or the courage for this, right? The, the other piece of this is, um, uh, selfishness. So Europe and the United States uh, um, came together to form this thing that I'm calling the West, and uh, they enjoyed um, unprecedented prosperity for a long run of history on the basis of the exploitation of African labor and African resources. Uh, and that debt has never really been looked at squarely in the face. However, as Europeans got very, very rich, and as Americans got very, very rich, um, they um, sort of began to engage the selfish reflex of the pie being something that shouldn't be divided. Instead of thinking about um, uh, tapping human resources in ways that continue to enhance and to multiply the prospects of, of, of their peoples and to increase wealth, to, in, to, to sort of create a greater good by, by constantly bringing in more people. In the case of the United States, this is particularly ironic. I know European history in this regard a little less well, but it is very clear that with each wave of immigration, the United States has gotten richer. Um, and so to see a kind of discourse in this country which sees um, immigration from the global South as mostly as a threat and as something that's going to dilute American prosperity or to, to sort of chip away at whatever it is that supposedly makes the United States great. It's just not founded at all in history. 
Uh, and I would add to that the fact that as um, a group, Africans uh, in recent decades have had among the very highest levels of educational attainment of any immigrant group in the country. Now, the stereotype is that, that Chinese and that Indians come here and they prosper and they do very well and they you know, get lots of graduate degrees and they end up in high-end uh, jobs. Africans have been brought in in smaller numbers, but they have done just as well as, as East Asians and as South Asians, but this gets no attention. Um, and the reason that it gets no attention, I think throws us back to this notion of racialism, that it doesn't, because this doesn't fit our mental models about you know, uh, different types of minorities, uh, we can't accommodate the thought, um, but we've got to get over that. Because Africa, as uh, Tatiana's question um, stated a few minutes ago, is going to constitute 60% of the working age population of the world a decade from now. Yeah. Pause, repeat, a decade from now, Africans are going to constitute 60% of the working age population of the world. You have a choice. Either you deprive yourself of access to many of the to the biggest single piece of the working age population of the world, or you say, let me be proactive about engaging that population in ways that help myself, but also along the way, help them. The discourse in Europe and in the United States in the anti-immigration world is, why should we spend our wealth to help those people? Like, why do we have to give them money? Why do we have to invest over there? Let them sort their own problems out. They are going to help you sort your problem out. And even if you don't realize it today, five or 10 years from now, you're going to realize it in a much more emergent and even painful way. So get ahead of the problem. Get over the racialism. Understand that human beings are human beings, that we all have the same potentials. There's no such thing as a model minority. There's such a thing as opportunity. And when you give opportunity, equal opportunity to people of different backgrounds, history shows that they do roughly more or less equally with that opportunity. Um, we, need to, we need to absorb that lesson and we need to come to terms with this. Um, and we have a chance. We have a few years to begin to turn this conversation around and to, and to try to, to be proactive instead of reactive. Thank you.